Might as well. Shalom, shalom. Good. All right. Yep, this is uh, part two. Class is long, man. I'm tired. Um, but I want to get it done and get through it. And I hope that y'all watched uh, The Concept of Time, because that was the preface to... That was the preface to... Um, Well, which camera was on? Was recording this one? Oh, that one's the that one. That one, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something else. So, um, concept of time was the preface to this class: the time of death and resurrection. The time of death and resurrection was last week. Those of you who weren't here last week, apolog apologies, shame on you, for whatever the case may be. Um, but this is part two, so you may be lost because you weren't here for part one. Um, part one is in time of, time of death and resurrection this is the continuation of that class because the concept of time was to help you understand how to count time and days leading up to how to understand when the Messiah's death and resurrection. All right? Hopefully I get it tonight. Hopefully you get it. Hopefully you get it. All right? So part two. Well, part one ended. Up, how many of y'all remember where part one ended? How many of y'all know where I stopped in part one? Y'all know? Where I ended up in part one, where I stopped at. Very good. Look, it's 23 and verse 4. 11. And what does that explain? <clears throat> yes, please. What does that explain? Stand up. In the mic. What does that, what does that explain? Hold on. You don't, do you know? Let's see if he, if he knows. You wasn't here. Or you it wasn't here. So how do you know? You watch it on Periscope? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's good. You should watch it. You can watch it on Periscope. Right. It's on Periscope. Is anyone okay? Does anyone know what? Um, pass it back to him right there. He knows. I'm sure he knows. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Mike is on. Hey, shalom, leadership. Shalom. Um, yeah, Leviticus 23, verse 4. That's going into, as far as I know, it's going into the Sabbath day. Um, that we have to keep a holy convocation on the Sabbath okay. day. Right. Um, yeah, that's what it's going into. What about verse 9, nine to 11? That's what's that going to? Verse 9 to 11? Yeah. Well, matter of fact, let's just, I don't want to go back there because that's like going backwards. Okay, do y'all recall when I went over when it said the preparation day? Preparation day, part one. How many of y'all recall that from last week when I mentioned I went over a preparation day? Which is before the, which is before the Sabbath. You know what I'm talking about now? I'm trying to refresh your memory, so I'm going to go backwards. The class is long, so I'm trying to move forward. So Leviticus 23 is explaining the day of preparation. Pre what are they preparing? Do y'all recall what they're preparing during Passover? The day after the first day? What was, being, what was being prepared? Preparation day for what? Don't call out. Preparation day for what? Anyone know? No. Someone knew. Anyone recall preparation day for what? Yeah, stand up. Let's try. Let's see. Uh, it was the prepar preparation day of the, the Feast of First Fruits. Thank you. Yes, it was. It was the preparation for the first fruits. And the Sabbath following that Passover, that marked when you count seven Sabbaths down, you get Pentecost. You understand? So the preparation day was when they start preparing the first fruits. To, in order to start to observe, in order to prepare to observe the Feast of First Fruits that was coming, that would come after Passover. You understand? Seven, seven Sabbaths later. You understand? Y'all sure? Who's not sure? You want me to go over it again? I'll go over it again. You want me to go over it again? That portion again? Yes? All right. We'll go to um, Mark 5. Oh, I want to go to... Uh, Get John 18. Who's reading for me? Uh, Officer Ezekiel. Okay. I don't know your name. Just say me. <laughs> John 18. John 18, 31. This is the book of John, chapter 18 and verse 31. Let me see that's what I want. Let me see. Let me see. Let's get to the point. Uh, John 18. John 18. One. 
1931. My apologies. 1930. Hold on. That's it. Preparation? That's it. No, no. It's two places. Y'all go there first. 1931. Go there first. There's the book of John, chapter 19 and verse 31. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath, on the Sabbath day, for that the Sabbath day was a high day. For that Sabbath was for, for that Sabbath day was a high day. Go ahead. Besought Pilate that their legs might be broken, and that they might be taken away. So why was that Sabbath a high day? Who knows? Why was that Sabbath a high day? <clears throat> who knows? Who knows why that Sabbath was a high day? If you know, put your hand up higher. Don't be nervous. No, no. Yep, right there. Put your hand up again. That's him. Why was that Sabbath a high day? Because it was a Passover. Right, and Passover the first day is a what? Sabbath. Thank you. So that Sabbath was a high day because the first day of Passover is a Sabbath. So that day was what? The preparation day. Question. Yes, we can. Go to the calendar. Um, the. Right. Let me show you all again. Refresh from last week. That's fine. All right. All right. Pay attention, take notes, ask questions. Mm -hmm. All right? Don't be embarrassed to ask a question because this is vital. This is life and death stuff. Right, when you ask a question, those who may be afraid to ask a question you have, they may be happy that you asked the question. You, you, you inspire them to ask. All right, if you can, blow up some more if you can. As big as it can go. So download. Yeah, download it and then just blow it up. There we go. All right, so this was from the other brought this out way back. So you have the 15th day at even. That's why the one is black. That's a night. That's night one. All right. Then you have the black two. That's night two. The black three is in night three. Then the light, the yellow one and two and three is day one, two and three because he was in the ground three days and three nights. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we have is the first day of Passover is the fifth. It's the 14th day at even, which is what? The 15th day. Based upon the concept of time video, right? Yes, sir. So the 14th day at even is the 15th day, right? So 15th day, right? So the 15th day at evening is what? The 15th day at even is what? The 16th day. Right. So the 15th day at even, what did Israel start to do? Read John 19 again, verse 31. John 19 and verse 31. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. Right, because they, you had to put the, um, put the bodies in the ground before the sun went down. Go ahead. That was the law. Based upon Deuteronomy 21, the body had to go into the ground before the sun went down or the land would be defiled. Deuteronomy 21, and that's Deuteronomy 21, verse uh, 22. Right, you've done your own. Go ahead. For that Sabbath day was an high day. For that Sabbath day, the first day of Passover is a high day. It's the Sabbath day. Go ahead. Besought Pilate that their legs might be broken. Break their legs. Go ahead. Take them down. And that day might be taken away. So that, e that same day is the day of preparation for the first fruits, right? Which takes place the following day after that Sabbath, which would be the, which would be the 15th day at even, which is what? The 6th, which is, which is the next day, Right? Then the following day or evening is what day? Is the 17th, which is what day? The what? The what? The what? The what? The what? Only a few of y'all saying it. The first day, 15th day is Passover. The next day they're preparing for is the preparation day to offer the first, that's to bring, divide the first fruits, the 16th. Then the following day that comes after is the Yes, I want all you to say so I know you're all on the same page. All on the same page. You understand? All right, so day one, Passover. Day two, for preparation for first fruits, or evening of the, evening of the 15th. We're going to do it the 16th. 
Then the next day is the Sabbath. All right? So now, go to uh, Matthew 15, Mark 15 and verse 42. I'm just going to just jump through those. The book of Mark, chapter 15, verse 42. Oh, let me get it. Let me get it. I can be there with you. Yeah, read that. Now, well, remember, all the, all the um, disciples are saying the exact same thing. All right? They're all, it's a, you got to put it all together. Read that. Mark 15, verse 42. And now when the even was come, because it was the preparation, mm -hmm. that is, the day before the Sabbath. The day before the Sabbath. So the preparation. So when the even was come, that now marks that now marks uh, the 16th day at even. Right, once it, once it gets dark. Then the day before that, the preparation day is the day before the Sabbath. It says, even was come because of the preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath. Because preparation day is the next evening, and the day after that is the Sabbath. You understand? You understand? Just in case you don't. Another one, get um, Luke 23, and I think it's 46 or it's 54. Luke 23, verse 54. The book of Luke, chapter 23 and verse 54. And that day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. Why the Sabbath drawn on? Because once the evening comes in, that's the 16th day, and the next day is... The Sabbath. So the Sabbath is coming soon. You understand? That's why I said it's drew on. It was coming. Drew on means it was coming in. It was coming. You understand? Drew on. Day before the Sabbath. All right? Um, let's see. Leviticus 23, verse uh, 9. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, and verse 9. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. He did that the following day after Passover. Go ahead. First day of Passover. Go ahead. Verse 11. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Right. So go to, um, back to the calendar again. So it says, see, it says right there, it says, hurry to bury, based upon Deuteronomy 21, it has it right there. And then you have the following, doesn't have it on there, but the following day will be the, when they offer the first fruits and so forth. Understand that evening. Where's it at? Matthew 27, and 45, 50. We don't have it there. But the evening, that evening, they start to do it. Then the next day is preparation day. The following day will be the uh, Sabbath. You understand? Y'all sure? So night two will be preparation. They, they provide the first fruits. That's night two. Then the next day is night three, which is a Sabbath day. You understand? Mm -hmm. All right. How the Sabbath drew on. Right, it's it drew close. on. It's close. So it's coming in. It was close. Thank you. So now, let's go to Matthew 27, verse 11. Now we're going to go into part two. Matthew 27, verse 11. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 11. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? Now, I'm kind of backtracking before he was put to death. So I'm going to tie that in. Let that out. I'm going to tie it in. Read again. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? Uh -huh. And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. Thou sayest. Go ahead. And when he was accused of the chief priests and the elders, he answered nothing. He didn't say anything. Go ahead. Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered him to never a word. Didn't say anything to him. Go ahead. Insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. He marveled greatly. Hold on. Stop there. Get Mark 15, verse 1. The book of Mark, chapter 15, verse 1. 
And straightway in the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are thou the king of the Jews? I heard it earlier. Go ahead. And he answered, and he ans- and and he answering said unto him, Thou sayest. Go ahead. Thou sayest it. Go ahead. And the chief priests accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. Mm-hmm. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answerest thou nothing? Behold, how many things they witnessed against thee. But Jesus yet answered nothing. So that Pilate marveled. Get there earlier. Get Luke 22, verse 66. Luke 22, verse 66. The book of Luke, chapter 22, and verse 66. And as soon as it was day, the elders of the people and the chief priests and the scribes came together and led him into their council, saying, Art thou the Christ? Tell us. And he said unto them, If I tell you, Ye will not believe. Go ahead. And if I also ask you, ye will not answer me, nor let me go. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. Then said they all, Art thou the Son of God? And he said unto them, Ye say that I am. And they said, What need we any further witness? For we ourselves have heard of his own mouth. This guy's blaspheming. See that? We don't need no witnesses. We heard of our own mouth. This guy's speaking blasphemies. Get the next chapter. 24, no, 23 verse 1 to verse 3. Luke 21 verse 1. 23, 23 verse, verse 1. 1. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ the king. So he, he himself is Christ. So this is a lie, because he never said that. So you're not a lying now. He himself is the king. Go ahead. Verse 3. And Pilate asked him, saying, Are thou king of the Jews? That's why he asked him, Are you king of the Jews? Based upon what is written in verse 2. Go ahead. And he answered him and said, Thou sayest. You say it. Get John 18 and verse 28. John 18, 28. This is the book of John, chapter 18 and verse 28. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. And it was early. It was early. They took him during the, they took him when it was dark. It was early, early, early um, morning hours, go ahead. When it was still dark, go ahead. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled but that they might eat the Passover. Go ahead. Pilate then went out, went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a male factor, we would not have delivered him up, to, up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. You judge him then. Go ahead. The Jews therefore said unto him, it is not lawful for us to put any man to death. Unless Rome says so, go ahead. That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Go ahead. Then Pilate answered, then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou king of the Jews? Go ahead. Jesus answered him, Sayest, sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Right. So, are you singing yourself, or did someone tell you I said I was, a, I was a king? Go ahead. Verse 35. Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Am I a Jew? Go ahead. Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Go ahead. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Kingdom is not, my kingdom is not yet. It's not established yet. Go ahead. Verse 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. So at this point, Christ finally answers him. After he kept asking him, he said, he answered not a word. He answered not a word. He finally gave him an answer at this point. Go ahead. Verse 38. Pilate saith unto him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, 
I find in him no fault at all. I, I find no fault in this man. This man is innocent. Get um Matthew 27, verse 15. I find no fault. Matthew 27, verse 15. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, and verse 15. Now at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had, and they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. A popular prisoner named Barabbas. Go ahead. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, whom will, ye, whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? Hold on. Go ahead. Read on. Verse 18. For he knew that for envy they had delivered he him. He knew for envy that the Pharisees delivered Christ into, the, into his custody. They envied Christ. They hated him. Get um, Mark 15, verse 6. This is the book of Mark, chapter 15 and verse 6. Now at that feast he released unto them one prisoner whom they, had, whom they desired, whomsoever they desired. And there was one named Barabbas, which lay abound with them, that made insurrection with him, who had committed murder in the insurrection. This guy was a murderer. This guy was a prison in prison because he was a murderer. Go ahead. A and known the, notable murderer. Go ahead. And the multitude, crying aloud, began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. Go ahead. But Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy. So he knew that the chief priest delivered Christ for envy. They hated, they secretly hated his guts. Get John 18, 37. Yeah. There's the book of John. Hold on, hold on. Give him a mic. You have a question? Um, uh, Mark 15 and 6, it right. says, uh, actually 7, it says, which uh, lay bound with them that had made insurrection with him. Is that saying that he was going against the government? Yeah, or? he was. Okay, okay. Right, he was going against, right. <coughs> There's the book of John, chapter 18 and verse 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, uh -huh. that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. 38. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. You know? But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Uh -huh. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Let Christ, shall let Christ go? Go ahead. Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. A robber, and he was a murderer. A robber and mercy. Rather than let Christ go, let the murderer and robber go. They hated him that much. A notable robber and murderer that caused an insurrection in the, in the empire. Get um, Luke 23, verse 4. Find no fault. This is the book of Luke, chapter 23, and verse 4. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. And they were the... Verse 4, that's verse 4? Yes, yeah, verse 4. Read again. Luke 23, and verse 4. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. So he said, I find no fault in this man. Get Matthew 27, verse 19. Matthew 27, verse 19. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 27, and verse 19. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? Leave that man alone. He's innocent. Go ahead. For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Go ahead. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas to, and destroy Jesus. Go ahead. The governor answered and said unto them, whether of, the, whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. The robber and murderer. Go ahead. 
Pilate saith unto them, what shall, I, what shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, let him be crucified. Kill him. Yeah. And the governor said, why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, let him be crucified. So he's asking, what did he do? Kill him anyway. Get Mark 15, 11 and 12. This is the book of Mark, chapter 15 and verse 11. But the chief priest moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. So they provoked, they provoked the, the crowd to go, listen, um, um, convince the people to go and have Christ kill and release Barabbas. Okay, so, the, the, so the, the Pharisees and scribes inside the people to go against Christ as well. Go ahead. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will ye then that I shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, Why? What evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. So I want get Luke 23 now. Verse 5. <clears throat> this is the book of Luke, chapter 23 and verse 5. I'm doing this for a reason. I'm showing that all of them are saying the same exact thing, but in different ways, and some give more of an elaborate understanding of what took place around that. That's so why I'm doing this. Some of y'all may say, oh, it's repetitious. It's annoying. But just bear with me because as time goes on throughout the class, you're going to see different things being added in there that's not mentioned by others. 23 verse 5. This is the book of Luke, chapter 23 and verse 5. And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. Teaching throughout what? Teaching, teaching throughout, throughout all Jewry. Let you know who Christ was teaching. Teaching throughout all Jewry. All Israelites he was teaching. Not all nations. He was teaching throughout all Jewry, starting in Galilee. So wherever, wherever Jewry was, including that Samaritan woman, that's what he was teaching. All right? Read on. Beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. Go ahead. And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction. Uh-huh. Unto where? Unto Herod's jurisdiction. So Herod, Herod was over Galileans. Go ahead. He sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at the time. Not too far from him. Go ahead. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he was desirous to see him of a long season, mm -hmm. because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Then he questioned with him in many words, but he answered him nothing. And ignored him too, because Christ ignored heathens. He spoke when he felt like speaking. Go ahead. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod with his men of war set him at naught, and mocked him, and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe, and sent him again to Pilate. Go ahead. And the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were at enmity between themselves. They hate each other, not their friends. Go ahead. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me, and as one that perverted the people. Mm -hmm. And that's, behold, that's, you, that's what you guys said about him. Go ahead. And behold, I have examined him before you, have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. Go ahead. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent, for I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. So we're not going to read about this in any other gospel. Only Luke mentions that, that Pilate sent him to Herod. Herod was over Galilee at the time, which is historically accurate. Herod, Herod was over Galilee. Luke only mentions this. No one else mentions that he sent him to Herod except him. That's why I'm showing you there's a difference. So Luke gives more of an elaborate understanding of what took place regarding his birth as well as his sentence to death. You understand? Luke gives the most detail, the most out of everybody, the most. Go ahead. Verse 16. I will therefore chastise him and release him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. So he sees Herod and Luke. He said, I'm going to chastise him and release him. Go ahead. For of necessity, he must release one unto them at the feast. Because uh, by law, the Romans had to release at least one Israelite during the feast. Go ahead. Verse he eight. said, well, if you're going to release somebody, release the murderer and robber rather than an innocent man. Go ahead. Verse 18. 
And they cried, and they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, yeah. who for a certain sedition made in the city. See that? It goes back to what we mentioned earlier. Insurrection or sedition in the city. Go ahead. Who for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison. And robbery was cast into, is cast into prison. Go ahead. Verse 20. Pilate therefore willing to release Jesus spake again to them. But they cried saying crucify him. Crucify him. And he said unto them the third time. Why? The third time. Why? Go ahead. Why? What evil hath he done? Uh huh. I have found no cause of death in him. So now you, so now we see when he sent. So he sent Herod. He sent him to Herod first. Then, he, then he asked afterwards when he brought him back from Herod. What did he do? So Luke brings that understanding in. Go ahead. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. I will chastise him and let him go. What was the verse was that? Twenty two. That was twenty two. Hold on. Mm, that's all I want. Get Mark fifteen thirteen. Is the book of Mark, chapter 15 and verse 13. And they cried out again, crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, why, what evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, crucify him. So before that, he, he, that's, when he, that's when he returned from Herod, his, um, Herod's humiliation. All right? So after, before this right here, he said this, the third time, he returned from Herod's humiliation of him. Now, let's get, um, that was 14, right? Yeah. Get, um, Matthew 27, verse 23. No, I don't want that. Get Matthew 27, verse 24. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 27, and verse 24. When Pilate saw it, when Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing. When they kept saying over and over again, crucify him, crucify him. Go ahead. But that rather a tumult was made. Rather a tumult, I mean, a, 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 a plot was made against him to have him killed. Go ahead. He took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. I'm not going to do with this. This is all y'all doing this. This is all y'all doing. Go ahead. See to it. Go ahead and kill him. Go ahead. Go then ahead. answered all the people and said. And that's all I want. See to it. Hold on. Get Luke 23, verse 23. That's what I want to do, fine. This is the book of Luke, chapter 23, verse 23. Uh-huh. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. Crucify him, crucify him, go ahead. And the voices of them and of the chief priest prevailed. He, but that's why I go back to earlier, said he could prevail nothing. He couldn't convince them not to have him killed. Go ahead. Verse 24. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. I mean, see you to it. Go back to, going back to see you to it. Go to Matthew 27, verse 25. Matthew chapter 27 and verse 25. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be upon us and our children. Damn. Read it again. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be upon us and our children. If, it, if, if anyone's guilty, it be us. On, on us, and if he's innocent, let his blood be upon us and on our children. And it is. Go ahead. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus... And he, he did chastise him. He ended up whipping him. He beat him. Go ahead. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Uh -huh. Hold on. That's all I want. Get Mark 15, 15. After he beat him, whip, whipped him first, then he gave him over to be killed. This is the book of Mark, chapter 15, verse 15. That's how his bones ended up showing. Those are the beating he got. Mark 15, 15. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, he could, prevail, he could prevail nothing. Go ahead. Released Barabbas unto them, and delivered Jesus when he had scourged when him. When he to beat be, him, go ahead. To be crucified. On. Get John 19 1. I'm putting it together for you. John 19 and 1. The book of John, chapter 19 and verse 1. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. Took him and scourged him. Oh, that's all I want. Watch this. Get Matthew 27, verse 27. There's a reason why I'm doing this. He took him and scourged him. John, now get Matthew 27, 27. What, do you, what, do you, what happened after he beat him? The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 27. Because we read that he beat him, and then he gave him into their hands to be crucified. 
That's not the whole thing. Matthew 27, verse 27. Watch this. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall. Before he gave him to them. Go ahead. And gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put him on a, and put on him a scarlet robe. They took his clothes, his clothes off of him and put on him a scarlet robe. Go ahead. The same way Herod did. Herod put on a gorgeous robe of him and mocked him, put his clothes back on, sent him back to Pilate. Then Pilate's soldiers put, do the same exact thing that um, Herod and his men did. Take his clothes off, put on some fancy clothes on him, fancy Roman clothes on him. Go ahead. Verse 29. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns. And they put a crown of thorns on his head. Read it from the top again. And verse they, 28. Verse 28. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. Go ahead. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, uh -huh. they put it upon his head. So the Romans did that. They put a crown of thorns on his head and gave him a scarlet robe. Go ahead. And a reed in his right hand. And a reed in his right hand. Go ahead. And they bowed the knee before him. And mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And mocked him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. Now, what's crazy about this is that when you examine the Christian and Catholic church, they have him wearing that. They have him wearing the crown of thorns and that Roman garbage. Mm -hmm. when you read it, I'm going to show you. But that's the mockery. That, that right there is to, is to maintain the mockery of what he was wearing. All right? Now, of course, in the Catholic church, it's usually a red, like a red, uh, red, red and white sash. satin, sa red sash. It's not in a white robe. It's nonsense. Here it says a scarlet robe. A scarlet robe, and it gave him a crown of thorns. And it's all, you know, effeminate and, and faggy. <laughs> all that stuff in the picture. I can't stand that picture. And so that's how they have him depicted. And we all look at the picture and cry and feel bad. But that's the mockery of him. Aside from making him look white, that's the mockery itself. Right. But what he's wearing is even more mockery. All right? So read it, read it again, verse 31 again. 31. Uh, 31, verse, verse 31. 31. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off of him. Took the robe, they took the robe off of him, go ahead. And put his own raiment on him. And put his own clothes back on him. Now, you watch, when you see the crucifixion pictures, he's wearing Roman stuff. They took it off, put his clothes back on. He was not wearing Roman apparel when he was from the cross. He was wearing his own kind of clothes. Remember the blue and fringes? That's what he had on. Read on. Verse 32. 31 again. Thir and, and after that, they had mocked him. They, they took the robe off of him Go and ahead. put his own raiment on him. And put his own raiment on him. Go ahead. And led him away to crucify and him. And then gave him to our people to have him killed. Now, get... Oh, what verse is that? 30? 31? I want... Uh, I didn't even want you to go that far. Go to Mark 15, 16. Should have stopped at 30, but that's all right. Mark 15, verse 16. So when he took, the, took his clothes off of him, or whatever, and put his clothes back on him, we won't deal with that part. Mark 15 and verse 16. This is the so book this, of, let's, 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 let's pretend you didn't read the part where it says, crucify, it gave him to be crucified. Let's leave that part out for now. Mark 15 and verse 16. I don't want to go that far. Mark 15, verse 16 to verse 19. Mark chapter 15, verse 16. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called pr uh, Praetorium. Called Praetorium. Go ahead. The hall called Praetorium. Go ahead. And they called together the whole band. Remember that? Go ahead. And they clothed him with purple. With purple. Go ahead. A scarlet purple robe. Go ahead. And plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head. Uh-huh. And began to salute him. Hail, king of the Jews. Go ahead. And they smote him on the head with a reed. And did spit upon him. That is, that's left out. And they spit in his face. Go ahead. And bowing their knees, worshipped him. Mocking him. Now, go to John 19, verse 2. John 19 and verse 2. The book of John, chapter 19 and verse 2. And the soldiers... We're going to verse, we're gonna read to verse 5. Go ahead. John 19, verse 2. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they... Put on him a purple robe. Purple robe. Go ahead. And said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. And spit in his face. That's left out. Go ahead. Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto them. So, so Pilate, read again. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. So after they did that, while he's still wearing the Roman stuff, 
Then he brings him out to the people and goes, listen, I found no fault in this man. While they're mocking him. Go ahead, verse 5. Verse 5. Watch this. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, behold the man. So he goes, behold the man. There you go. The man you want to have killed. Look at him. Why he's dressed like that. The crown of thorns on his head and the, and the purple robe made of scarlet. Go ahead. That's all I want. That's all I want. Now get. Yeah, read on. Read on. Read down. Verse 6. Verse 6. When the chief well, priest, we're going to be to verse 13. Go ahead. Verse keep, 6. Don't start. Keep that in mind. Behold the man. Read verse 6. When the chief priest, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him. Crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. Go ahead. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die. Uh -huh. Because he made himself the son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. And went again into the judgment hall. And went back into the judgment hall. So he brought Christ back inside. Go ahead. And saith unto Jesus, whence art thou? Wait, who are you? Where are you from? Go ahead. But Jesus gave him no answer. An answer. Go ahead. Then saith Pilate unto him, speakest thou not unto me? Why do you mean talk? Why do you mean answer me? Go ahead. Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? I have thee? power to have you killed or freed. You don't, you don't, you don't understand that? You don't answer me? Go ahead. Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. You have power because God gave you power over me, not because you're something special. Go ahead. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Those who gave me into your hands are, are, are great, have the greatest sin, which would be us. That's why Israel said to him, let his blood be upon us and our children. And it is. Go ahead. Verse 12. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. So from that point on, Pilate was still, still trying to get him free. Listen, let this guy go. He's innocent. He was still trying to talk Israel to, um, to releasing him. Go ahead. But the Jews cried out, saying, if thou let this man go. If you let this man go. Go ahead. Thou art not Caesar's friend. You are not Caesar's friend. Go ahead. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. This man, this man says he's the king. He's going against Rome. He's the coons now. Go ahead. Verse 13. 13, the last verse. Go ahead. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement. But in the Hebrew... Ga Gabatha. Gabatha. And that's when he put him clothes back on him. He put the clothes back on. He didn't, well, he didn't leave with them clothes on. He put, he put his own clothes back on him. Remember that? Before John? That's what Mark said. Now, get, read verse 14. This is where it gets complicated. Verse 14. Remember, remember I, you read 31. Is, well, well, let's read verse 14. Watch this. Verse 14. And it was the preparation of the Passover. Uh-huh. And about Hold the on. So verse 14 is talking about what? The preparation of the Passover, right? Preparation of the Passover. Going into what? <gasps> Going into what? You read it earlier today. Going into what? Y'all already confused. You went over it earlier today. Preparation of the Passover. What is that talking about? Virtual hands again. Oh, now the hands go up. We went over it earlier today. I want to. I showed you the calendar and everything. I'm doing hints out there. I'm trying not to give you the answer. Look, look, look in your notes, man. I'm gonna give y'all a chance to look in your notes. Looking in your notes. Are you either you're taking notes or you're just looking at me and not taking no notes? It's one or the other. And if that's if it's the latter, that's to your own detriment. Look in your notes and see we went over in the beginning. I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a few seconds. It's 601 on my watch. I'll wait till 602. Two seconds. I'm not playing with y'all. No, no, I'm not doing that. Josh, I'm over I'm over three consecutive times in three different gospels. And gave you a calendar. And the old testament. All right, six oh two. Should be answers now. I should have excellent notes. Raise your hands. hands up with the notes. Who knows what I'm talking about? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. 
That means you're not taking notes. That's what it means. That means you're not taking notes. You're just look, up here looking at me. I'm telling you. I don't like that. This is not, I'm going to tell you right now, this is not the Christian church you sit here and listen to pastor talk all night. I'm telling you. That's why we said bring a pen, paper, bring a pencil, a notebook. Y'all be looking at me. Y'all got to take notes. So based upon your notes, who has an idea? Raise your hand. Based upon your notes, who knows I'm, what, what this is going into? These are familiar hands. I'm trying to see newer hands. I'm going to call on newer. I'm going to call on newer faces. Put your hands down. How many of you here are new? Raise your hand. Who's new? Raise your hand. One. Who else is new? Who's been here more, who's been here more, than, more than a month? Raise your hand. Who's been here, more than, who's been here for, for a week? Raise your hand. First day, raise your hand. Keep your hand up. Second day, raise your hand. First week, raise your hand. Two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, one year, two years. Y'all nervous? Raise your hands if you've been here more than a year. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> Let's go back. Two weeks, three weeks, two months, four months. Four months, five months, six months, seven months, one month, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks. Huh? Y'all been over a year? Who's been over a year? Oh, y'all should have excellent notes then. This, this is ridiculous. All right, so I'm going to call on the hands on going up. No, your hand's already up. Point tail, in the back, stand up. What I go over early today? What did I go over early today? I just walked in. You just walked. Oh, you came in late. Yeah, okay. First day. So today's his first day. Is that what you're saying? No. I just no, he's he was late. Were you here last week? Yes. Did you take good notes last week? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I ask, went over last week too. Ask your question again. Yeah. What is this going into preparation day? I went over this last week. You're right. I went over this last try week. To, yo, come try to, come on, bro. You went over preparation day last week. I did. So you should be able to have a grasp of it now, even though you came in late. Raise your hand. High. Go ahead. Raise you got it? Um, preparation day from last week. When y'all take notes, do y'all write down what the verse is saying? Or just write the verses and the chapters down? I'm convinced that most of y'all sit down and y'all just sit there and y'all just write down John 19, 14 and leave it, leave it blank. And I have no idea what it says. You know what it says for that moment, then as soon as you go home, you forgot. I know you know. Hand down, I know you know. He's not sure. Have a seat. But right, stand up. Pass it over. Shalom, Deacon. I'm going to do a class. When I come here again, how to take notes. I got to do that now. Because y'all just sitting here looking at me. Yes. It was preparation for the first fruits. Thank you. Preparation for the first fruits. Who remembers that? Raise your hand. Who does not remember that? Raise your hand. <laughs> who does not remember that? Raise your hand. That's, those who had your hand up earlier should have it up again because you didn't remember that. Okay, I'm telling you, to your own detriment. Read verse 14 again. John 19 and verse 14. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. Now, how many of y'all remember? Don't call out. It was the sixth hour when he said to them, Behold your king, right? It says here, it was the sixth hour. When, now it says, so he wasn't killed here yet, right? He wasn't crucified here. But yet, but yet it says the sixth hour. From last week, what hour was the Messiah, your hand, put your hand down, what hour was the Messiah crucified on from last week? How many of you know, raise your hand. Don't call out. How many of you know, raise your hand. How many of you do not know, put your hand down, raise your hand. 
How many of you do not know what hour he was crucified from last week? Raise your hand. Who was, okay, who, who, who was here last week? Raise your hand. Who don't know? Y'all were here last week? Who was here last week? How many, out of, out of y'all, who, out of you who were here last week, who does not know? I don't know if y'all lying to me or if I'm asking the wrong question in the wrong way. I don't know which one it is. Or both. From, put your hand down. Start again. From last week, who was here? Which one do you know which hour he was crucified on? Hands down if you don't know. Okay, so, okay. Right here. To the front end. Yep, stand up. What hour was he crucified on based upon last week's class? Shalom, Brother Yon. Shalom. Uh, the 9 a.m. Which hour is that? The ninth hour. 9 a.m. is the ninth hour? Third, excuse me, third hour, third hour. Thank excuse you. Me. Very good, very good. Third hour, the third hour. So he was crucified at 9 a.m., which is considered in Hebrew time, Israelite time, the third hour. You understand? The sixth hour in Israelite time would be two. I'm saying that for a reason. The third hour in Israelite time is nine. 12 p.m. Israelite time is the sixth hour. Ninth hour Israelite time is 3 p.m. Y'all understand? Do y'all understand? Yes, sir. Y'all say I do, but y'all do not understand. The third hour, Israelite time. We didn't have this back then. We didn't have Timex watches back then. We had sundials. We had sundials. So the Bible gives us an hour estimate. So based upon the estimate of our forefathers who were pretty precise in their time, we know that the third hour of the day is 9 a.m. The sixth hour of the day for Israelites, the sixth hour is 12 p.m. And the ninth hour for Israelites is 3 p.m. You understand? So if he was on the cross, right, at 9 a.m., right, and it, was, and it got dark over the land, what hour? Don't call out. It got dark over all the land from what hour to what hour? Who knows? From last week, who knows? Presently, who knows? Okay, I'm seeing the hands. To the far right. Stand up. Stand up. Yep, give me the mic. Mm-hmm. There was darkness over all the land and all the earth for how long? Six hours. How long? Six. Six hours. It was dark for six hours? So, okay. It was dark for how long when he was on the cross? How long was it dark when he was on the cross? He was on the cross. Oh, three. Three hours. Three hours. Twelve to three. Thank you. Which would be what? Which hour to which hour? The... The sixth hour to uh-huh. the ninth hour. Thank you. The sixth hour. T- I want to make sure I understand. So read verse 14 again. John There's a 9, problem here. Read verse 14 again. John nine, ver- John 19, verse 14. And it was the preparation of the Passover. Uh-huh. And about the sixth hour. And he said unto the Jews, behold your king. So how is it here? He's saying to them, behold your king in the sixth hour. If he was on the cross, the sixth hour. From the sixth to ninth hour, it was he was on the cross. He was on the cross from the third hour, actually. But it was dark over all the land while he was on the cross from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. So why is Herod, so why is Pilate here saying to the to the Jews, here's your king, while he's not crucified? What's happening here? This is what will be used to tell you that the Bible has contradictions. That's why I want y'all to pay close attention. That's why I went through all this trouble to explain to y'all the concept of time. And y'all supposed to go over your notes from last week. So we won't be confused. Now I have to go back and backtrack again and again. It makes the class longer. It prolongs the time. Who knows why? So I had to hand up. Stand up. You have the mic, so you guys. Uh, yes, sir. Um, it says about the six hour. Right. Very good. I do emphasize that about. So what does that mean? What does that mean? Like um, it was before the six hour. It was about probably five thirty. But like when was he on the cross? But when, but when was he on the cross? Huh? 
When was he? What, say it again. No, I, I said something. Hey, I said Fox. No, 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 no. The He's six right. Hour. Say it again. All right. The six. It says about the six hour, right. which, which would be the um, twelve a.m. So it's before twelve a.m. Twelve p.m. Or twelve. I'm sorry, twelve p.m. Well, he was in the cross at what time? After twelve p.m. Before. Before twelve. Third hour. Nine a.m. Mm-hmm. Nine a.m. You looking at it again? Okay. I want to understand. Yes, sir. People will come against you and say that's a contradiction. So I have to help you tonight. Okay. Now, I want. I know it's, this is a, this person here is a, is a bit of a curveball. I threw it out there on purpose because people are going to use it against you. So I'm going to help you understand tonight. When you examine John, John is the same John of Revelations. When John wrote things, John, John in his writings tended to backtrack. You listening? John tends to backtrack. So he'll say something, and then he'll go back to what happened before that. You understand? Now, when you examine Israelite time, and Israelite time starts when? The day begins when? And ends when? It begins when? Ends when? Begins, ends, begins, ends, begins, ends. Okay. Roman time begins the same time that a day starts here in America. When does the day start here in America? 12 a.m. When does it end? 12 a.m. At night. Even the white man knows that, but that's beside the point. White man has most sense in our people. But nonetheless, Roman time... The sixth hour is what time? If we go by Roman time, 6 a.m., 12 a.m., 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 a.m. Roman time is sixth hour is 6 a.m. Roman time, the sixth hour is 6 a.m. The sixth hour Israelite time is 12 p.m. Roman time is 6 a.m. So that's one thing that they'll say. Some would say that John was giving the Roman figure, Roman time, which is something new. Remember, when you read, more, when you read uh, Esther, when you read Ezra, Nehemiah number mentioned a month, Nisan. Right, right. Nisan is not an Israelite name. That is a Babylonian term for the month of Abib. Right. Mm-hmm. Y'all understand? Mm-hmm. Ezra gave the same times. It mentioned time, month of Tammuz, the month of Abib. Uh, the month of, uh, what is it? I guess Elul. Elul, Kedar. Kislev, Kedar. Not, not, not Kedar. Kislev, whatever. Those are pagan terms for the, for, for, for the months of the year. Like we say, we say today, what do we say? Monday. We say Tuesday. We say Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. When it's really just day one, day two, day three. Rather than say month one, month two, we say January. There's a God. February, another God. March, Mars, another God. June, another God. May, another God. July, Julius Caesar. August, Augustus Caesar. Septimius. No, no, September is uh, septum. That's seven. Seven, septum, octum, whatever. Octavius Caesar. You understand? November is uh, whatever. I forgot what that is. You get the point. But we use those that, that, we use that today, right? So... And it's a, it's a, it's a possi- it's a, I'll say it's a possibility that John was making reference to the Roman clock, Roman hour, in which he presented Christ and saying, Behold your king before he was crucified, during the judgment. You understand? Remember, they took Christ early in the morning. And the cock crew, remember? Peter denied Christ and it was the cock crew. Y'all remember that? The cock crows when? Early morning. You from the islands, y'all know from the islands, y'all know it crows around what, four? Or late four in the morning to like five. Four, four five, o'clock. Mm-hmm. five o'clock. Before the sun comes up, it goes, uh, before. Before the five o'clock. Before five. See, brothers know the islands. Y'all know. Sisters know. If y'all from the islands, y'all know. So that's early morning. So he was so he was being so they had delegation going on, or it was a deliberation, whatever the term it is, during the early hours of the morning, when it was still dark. You understand? And so John is, some would say John is making reference to the Roman clock, the Roman time, in which he said, behold your king. Some will say, well, no, it's, it's simply a minor tra- mistranslation, and, it, and, it, and that simply means the third hour. So you can either go with one or the other. 
I particularly go with that because it goes with everything else. It, it coincides with Mark, Matthew, Luke's, and John, Mark, Matthew's, and Luke's account in the early hours. If it's a mistranslation, it's whatever. Or, but here's the point. Here's the point now. Some of you have said, mistranslation. Oh, no. Calm down. It's okay. It's not about a salvation. But here is the point. All of them agree that he was killed on Passover. That's all that matters. Regardless of what he, what he says, sixth hour, fourth, third, they all agree, all four agree on the account that he was killed during the Passover. That's all that matters. That's the most important thing to remember for salvation. Because he died for us to be saved during the Passover. He was born during the Passover, died during Passover. Y'all understand? That's all that really matters. So it's almost to argue that you can either go with the, with the accounts of John was using Roman time, or you can go with the account of minor, transla minor mistranslation. But you will find in the Bible, you'll find some. you find some in Chronicles and Kings. You'll find, it, it may say 500 here, and it may say 5,000 somewhere else. Not relevant. I don't care. Doesn't matter. That's not relevant to salvation. You understand? Now, I'm going to show you why, why, why most point to him using Roman time, him, back, him backtracking. Question? I'm going to show you. John 13. When I teach, I cover all my bases. I don't run from, I cannot run from anything. If I, if I were to avoid that, you'll say, see, he's avoiding that. Contradiction. So I had to go back. So I went back and I had to go back words before his death to bring that point out. This John. is the reason why it's important to go step by step. You understand? It's important to go step by step. Why? Because something like that, yes, yes something like that will trip you up. And next thing you know, right. what happens? You know, you got you got confusion. And then, and then all of a sudden, now you look like a fool in front of the people, and now people start pointing the finger, and then you run away with your garment between your legs. You don't want that. <laughs> you understand? Then never run away. You understand? Get the point. Get the information. Teach. If somebody brings it out. Don't run away from that. Yeah. Deal with it. Okay? Someone says to you, he was using Roman time. Okay. If someone says to you, that's a, mistran that's a minor mistranslation. Okay. Do they all agree he died in Passover? Yes. That's all we care about. That's how you end it. Because if you argue both, then it's going to be semantics. But if you say, well, listen, regardless of what it says there, they all agree he died in the Passover. So what are we arguing about? That's how you cut the conversation short. Because Negroes will argue in circles to cast doubt in your mind and have you all confused. And then, then you're back in the world, going to the club with them. <laughs> Looking for hoes. And, ho and, and whoremongers. John 13, verse 1. Is the book of John, chapter 13 and verse 1. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. So he said, notice he's saying, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew he was, his hour was come, that he should be killed, but should be killed, be verse 2. Verse 2. And supper being ended. And after they had eating the Passover and broken bread. Go ahead. The devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. He's going backwards when, this, when the betrayal took place. Go ahead. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given so all... Home, but before verse 1 and 2 took place, he's going to tell you what Christ did. Go ahead. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he has come and that he was coming from God and went to God. Yeah, verse, go ahead, go on. He riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. Go ahead. And after that he poured he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Go ahead. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, Dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, what I, what I do thou knowest not now. What I'm doing, you don't understand for now. But you'll get it later on. Go ahead. But thou shalt know hereafter. But you'll understand later on. I'm gone. Go ahead. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. You don't got to wash my feet. Go ahead. Jesus answered him, if I, wash, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. If I can't wash your feet, you're not my disciple anymore. Go ahead. Simon Peter saith unto him, 
Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. So if you're going to wash my feet, wash my hands and my head too. Go ahead. Jesus saith unto him, he that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not at all. And you're clean, all. but not all y'all are clean. Go ahead. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, ye, not, ye are not all clean. One of y'all the devil. Stop. So he's going before the Passover, before the betrayal took place, he washed their feet. John is backtracking. This is John 13. He's backtracking. Y'all understand? He's going back before the betrayal. This is John 13. The betrayal. Then 14, he speaks to the people, he speaks to the disciples about him dying and so forth. 15, he's a branch and so forth. Then 17 is he's praying over them again. 18 is when it starts the Passover it starts coming in. 18, the Pharisees come and take him. So you have 17 is when he pretty much starts talking to them regardless during Pass during uh, Passover. 18 is when they take him. 18 verse 1 is when they take him. You're gonna read that. They take him in 18, verse 1. So John 13 is telling you what happened before 18 took place. You understand? John 13 is telling you what happened before 18 took place. He's backtracking. You understand? In Revelations, John backtracks. You'll read a thing going on at that time, and you'll read future prophecy. Back that time, future prophecy. He goes back and forth. You understand? That's why it's more likely... John was using Roman time. He was backtracking what happened, what, what, they, what, what Pilate said to him when he took Christ out again and says, behold, you, behold the man. They said, kill him, crucify him. You understand? Either way, whether minor mistranslation or John using Roman time, what matters the most is that all four agree he was killed on the Passover. All four agree that he would die he would resurrect three days after three days and three nights. They all agree on that. You understand? That's the most important factor of the class. Now they will see the treatment of God. We are not black men. We are the Israelites. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.